After looking at different merchandising companies like Walmart and Target, we're going to actually be talking about the different inventory systems that they use. And the two inventory systems are periodic based and perpetual systems. And we're going to have to learn about these two systems before we actually perform journal entries for merchandising companies because the journal entries are going to dr they're going to vary dramatically based on whether we use a periodic or a or a perpetual system. Oh my god, I cannot talk today. But let's start by talking about the perpetual system. So let me just create a new layer really quickly. And the perpetual system is a very sophisticated and detailed inventory system in that in that everything is going to be reported and what I mean by that is when we make a sale receive some money and the the inventory leaves the retail we're going to record that the inventory is going out of the retail uh, business and that we're lowering our inventory level so and when we purchase purchase inventory as well it's going to show that our inventory levels are increasing so the perpetual system keeps track of inventory and you're always going to know inventory levels at all times so the perpetual system it's actually derived from the word perpetuity so it's going to keep track of the inventory in perpetuity uh, through its its technology system to keep track of all of the inventory going in and out and that's the perpetual system uh, let's talk about the periodic system now. So let's just close that. And the periodic system is definitely less sophisticated, but it is, but it is more simple. It is, it is simple. In that, what happens is when we, uh, when we make a sale, we're going to obviously incur incur money we're gonna receive have a receivable and the inventory is gonna leave the business like always but in the periodic system it's not actually going to record that the inventory has left the business so doesn't this create a problem if we're not recording inventory going out it's like what's gonna happen with the inventory like we're just not gonna we're just not gonna record it well what's gonna happen is that at the end of an accounting period maybe quarterly, we're going to do an inventory count. And what's going to happen in this inventory count is we're literally just going to count up the inventory and figure out how much ending inventory we have. Because at the beginning, we know how much beginning inventory we have. And if we create or if we con conduct an inventory count, we're going to know the ending inventory, which means we'll have an idea of how much inventory was sold and if we know how much inventory was sold we can also come up with an expense like cost of goods sold which is how much how much inventory are we expensing for uh, selling those goods and actually selling that inventory now here's where it gets kind of interesting uh, with cost of goods sold uh, for the different inventory systems. So let me just remove this for a second. And for a perpetual system, you're going to record for a perpetual system, since you're always recording everything at the time of the sale and the inventory is constantly being updated, you're recording cost of goods sold in your accounting system every single time you make a sale but for periodic for the periodic system you're not you're not going to have cost of goods sold every time you make a sale and that's because we don't actually keep an updated balance of inventory as we sell each good we just do inventory counts at the end of the accounting period so we're not going to be able to know the cost of goods sold and we're not going to record uh, the cost of goods sold for each for each transaction and the last part I wanted to cover was actually for 
for the uh, equation for calculating cost of goods sold. So let me let me just bring that up. Maybe I'll just bring it down a little bit lower. Will it fit? I don't think so. So I'm going to get rid of this and like I said, for a periodic system, you're going to have a certain amount of beginning inventory. Uh, this would be for like an inventory count kind of thing. Uh, so we have beginning inventory, represented by some boxes, of course. We've got our truck delivering some some inventory, or our goods that we've purchased. And of course, available sale or available goods, we have more boxes of inventory. And our ending inventory, we don't have much left, which means that we've sold quite a bit of inventory and that way we can figure out how much inventory we have left and we can come up with our cost of goods sold because we have to come up with this expense so that we can apply it to our income statement because it is an expense and you must record expenses in the right period which is on your income statement for the correct year. And this is basically the equation uh, for calculating cost of goods sold. So you just kind of want to remember it. I, you can also just kind of think of it simply, just beginning inventory plus purchases. Obviously, that creates more goods. And then subtract any inventory, and that's your cost of goods sold. So hopefully you kind of understand now the difference between periodic and perpetual systems. We're going to be covering uh, accounting journal entries for each system in the next few tutorials and I'll start off with a perpetual in the next presentation. I'll see you guys then. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.